Welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and on occasion, make fun of them. Today, I'm going to hear a story called Marriage Demolition. And guys, this story, this is definitely like no other story I've heard before. And I've been doing this for two years now, three or four months here on this channel, and for almost two years on the other channel. <clears throat> this is a story about a guy who unfortunately comes home to his, goes to his cabin and discovers his wife and some other dude, you can imagine. And unlike in other stories, this guy handles it in a way that, let's just say that he is, you're going to see he is lucky he doesn't spend the rest of his life in prison. Okay, you can get the point. And what he does, you're going to see here, really, well, he writes down and, uh, writes down how, what he's feeling, what he's thinking, all that, it takes it to a whole new level. And again, like I said, the actions he takes with a certain item that uh, you have to have a license for in most states, literally got, got Brian very close to life in prison. And so there's a lot of lessons in this story, guys, how pretty much it's not worth doing certain things. But ultimately, you're going to see how this, this goes for this guy and what things happen with him. And ultimately, this guy is having relations with his wife. There's more than meets the eye in this situation and deals with his property and the land and people wanting to buy. It's this whole, it's, it's difficult to figure out what to call this story in the title and everything, but it's definitely interesting. And I think you guys like, and by the way, guys, this is a long story. And so this is uh, the first of three parts, but I think you'll definitely like it because if I did all one, it'd take an hour and that's just too much. So get, grab a beer, grab some popcorn. This is definitely an interesting one. So it starts off, he says, I, a 32-year-old male, just discovered my wife, a 30-year-old female, cheating in our marital bed a few hours ago. Right now, I'm holed up in my dad's fishing cabin, trying to wrap up my head around what to do from here. I feel destroyed and worthless. I feel anger due to that rage. My entire life just got flushed down the toilet, and I have absolutely no one to talk to. The one person I thought I could just talk to just betrayed me and tried to lie about all about it. I just scared the hell out of three people, one of which was me. If the cops aren't looking for me right now, I'm lucky. If they are, I'll deal with it when I'm forced to. Well, as you're going to see, guys, oh yeah, the cops are after him. And you know what? Before I read more, nobody will blame this guy in the least for what he does. And the way he's thinking, the way he's thinking, nobody would. But at the end of the day, that type of justice doesn't exist anymore. And that can end, end you up in jail if you did something like prison jails short term prisons long term if you take things in your own hands he says here i work in construction demolition to be specific the crew i work with travels often and i've been gone for 10 days out of the 14 i was supposed to be gone due to rain very difficult to blow up wet things and the forecast i decided to catch a plane back home until i was certain we would work again the fly i took didn't get in until midnight i wanted to surprise my wife so i didn't let her know i was coming how many stories I've done like this where the guy gets home, he's leaving a work trip, he gets home early from a work trip or something like that where it gets canceled last minute, and he wanted to surprise his wife and comes home at night and finds her in the shower with some other dude or her in bed with some other dude, or you can imagine so many. The, uh, I drove the 45 minutes from the airport to our house. Eight years ago, my wife found some beautiful acreage far from any other homes through her job in real estate. Two years later, I was finished building our house, which we loved ever since. We have a four-car garage, so any cars parked in front is unusual. A black SUV one I didn't recognize made my heart sink. I instantly knew, I mean, I hadn't sensed any troubles with our marriage. We hadn't been in any fights. Our SCX life was great and frequent. But I knew something right then and there where I'd find once I went in. If the car belonged to a relative of hers who was visiting, she would have let me know. Part of me hoped it belonged to a female co-worker who had a little too much wine during a visit and needed to sleep it off. Yeah, well, his gut told him that wasn't the case. But that would have been highly out of the ordinary. I sat outside the house for at least 15 minutes thinking things through. But I parked my car about six inches from the driver's side of the SUV, which was parked beside a retaining wall. Whomever it belonged to wouldn't be entertained entering their car to leave without my say or breaking out a front or back window. I cut off my car and entered through the back door via the deck. I have a concealed carry weapon permit for a gun. You guys can connect the dots where this is going to go. I put on my holster 
before getting into my car at the airport and driving home. I wasn't afraid for my life, but I was afraid of losing my temper and taking this the life of someone else. Well, in that case, then, maybe you should have left it in the trunk. Uh, walking into my house, everything was quiet. At first, I didn't think anyone was home. But with a finished meal for two on the table and a sink full of dishes, I knew something was up. I calmly walked down the hall to our bedroom and slowly turned the knob. I pushed the door open, but didn't hear any commotion or movement at all. The room was pitch black dark. I walked over and turned the light on and in the bathroom. When I turned around, there was my wife completely naked, lying on top of some naked guy. Oh my God. That's terrible. I'd never seen him in my life. I was crushed. I felt like someone had just laid a 100-pound boulder on my chest. I felt tears welt in my eyes, but I knew tears were pointless and would do nothing to help the situation. So this guy thinks everything's great in his marriage. He says they're having a great time, good SCX life, all that. Comes home early, like all these stories, and look what he finds. Now watch what happens next. I pulled out my phone and began recording. I walked around the bed, videoing the pile of flesh in front of me. It began to sink and that my marriage was over. I realized all our property would be divided evenly, even though I'd been 100% faithful. I suddenly realized the house I built with my own bare hands would have to be sold when we divide the assets in the divorce. That's the worst thing. You're, you're, you're faithful, you're a good husband, and even though you didn't do anything wrong, you're going to lose half. It is the biggest bunch of bullshit ever. And lately, more and more gals are having to pay out money in alimony because for, for a lot of women nowadays are making a lot more money than guys, and they don't like any of that either. It was okay when the guys had to pay, but now when the gals are making more money, now they're throwing fits about it. I'm sure you guys see me do a couple of articles on my other channel about that. Anyhow, being physically betrayed felt worse than any pain I could have imagined. Knowing I was getting ready to be financially gutted to nearly made me lose my shit because it seemed so unfair. It is unfair. But I knew damn well I was done with her and would never touch her defiled body again. I was disgusted by what I saw, but mostly at my wife. In my mind, she had gone from sweet, devoted wife to Allie Crack, W-H-O-R-E, in the span of 15 minutes. Neither moved at all. I was fairly certain they were both passed out, drunk. Since the house was going to need to be sold, I suddenly didn't care about any damage to the house I'd worked so hard on. I pulled out my 45 and just looked at both of them betraying me in my own bed. For a second or two, I contemplated doing something I shouldn't, offing her, knowing those bullets would pass right through them and off him as well. But I came to my senses and realized neither were worth getting that electric chair over. Absolutely. And sadly, so many guys have done that, and then they end up going to jail and getting the chair. It's not worth it, guys. Good thing this guy isn't drunk. And despite the hurt I was feeling, I knew I might want to keep on living after all was said and done. So I pulled back the hammer, lifted it in the air, aiming to my upper right, and fired off two rounds into the ceiling. They both woke instantly. <clears throat> she was trying to push him off her to turn him around. He shoved her off him and into the floor when he suddenly locked his eyes with mine. Fear doesn't adequately describe the look in his eyes, but compared to sheer terror in my wife's eyes, he looked rather calm. She tried to tell me it wasn't what it looked like. What is it supposed to look like he comes home and finds you on top of some naked dude? Are you doing... Is there an artist in there drawing your portrait? Are you, what the hell? <clears throat> Goes on. So I fired a round through the bedroom closet door. She shut the F up really quickly while you still hadn't said a word. They were each seated in the opposite sides of the bed with the sheet pulled up over their necks. Can you imagine that that scene? He's there firing them off. And you know how loud it is, one of those going off? If any of you guys have obviously fired weapons. Those are fired weapons, you know. I'm watching what I say here. YouTube is sensitive. I asked the guy who he was, and he said his name was Marcus. I asked my wife how they knew each other, and she explained he owned his own real estate company. Mind you, she's a real estate business as well. Then I asked how long the cheating had been going on because I only been totally been totally clueless my wife was cheating. She had the audacity to claim that this was the first and only time they had slept together. First she says it's not what it looks like and now, oh, this is only the first time, I swear. So I fired two rounds into the bed's headboard between them. 
They began crying and begging me to stop. So I asked the question again. To my surprise, Marcus answered six months. It pissed me off, but at least I knew the truth. Six months. And by the way, him firing this off, you're going to see he doesn't have next door neighbors, fortunately, but it doesn't matter. You can imagine. I'm sure every state is, obviously every state is different about these types of things, but it's not going to go well for him doing what he does. But nobody, I'm sure nobody watching this blames the guy for what he's feeling and this whole thing. I asked my wife when she stopped loving me and through tears she lied and said she never stopped. She just can't help herself. I fired two rounds into the bathroom on her side of the bed and she began screaming as glass from the mirror shattered all over the counter and floor. I told her she was a lying, worthless W-H-O-R-E and I was done with her lies. She was clearly having a panic attack with good reason. But at the moment, I didn't care. I asked the guy if he was married. He replied that he was. I asked if he had children that would miss him. He swallowed before admitting he had two children. What a scumbag. I told him I truly appreciate him showing me that my wife is a tramp before we two had children together. But I asked him if having you know what with a cheating S-L-U-T was worth losing his wife and kids over. He begged me not to tell his wife. I told him to shut up because at that moment she had about 50% chance of, of her ending up a widow. I'm surprised this guy didn't shit himself. For the next 15 minutes, I paced at the foot of the bed with the weapon drawn, just trying to think. I knew holding them there against their will could deem me taking hostages. I knew I would have to eventually let them go. I told my wife to get up and go out to her car, get the car keys. She got out of bed and began to reach down and get her clothes off the, off the floor to pick, put back on. I told her to stop, clothes weren't needed, and again, get the keys. She walked down the hall and brought back her keys, handing them to me crying. I removed the house key and told her she wouldn't be needing it anymore. I knew she, she, I knew she wanted to protest. I couldn't do that, and that legally she was right. But a 45 tends to make debating legally moot. Or legality moot. I then told Marcus to get to stand, get his keys and well out of his pants, and then to follow me. I led him outside the toward his car, where I punched him in the face repeatedly until his nose and mouth were bleeding. That guy had it coming. After I moved my car so he could get into his SUV, I went back, picked up his keys, and told Marcus to stand up. I explained he could go home right then and there to confess everything to his wife, or she'd hear from me within 48 hours, with all the evidence of his cheating that I had recorded. <clears throat> I also explained he had 45 seconds to get off my property or the coroner would be escorting him off the property. The fact that he had no clothes on seemed a secondary issue at the moment. He got in his car and peeled away before I counted 25. So this guy's butt naked, jumps in his car and gets the hell out of there. Imagine him getting home in the middle of the night. I went back inside where my wife had put on a robe and she was seated at the kitchen table. I went to the bedroom, picked up her cell phone, and brought it to her in the kitchen. I asked if she wanted to call her parents or her sister to pick to pick up, pick her up. She refused. I even asked if she'd like to call the police. I think she anticipated us discussing things to clear the air, so she said no. She began to try and explain, but I stopped her yapping and told her we were done forever as far as I was concerned. You're damn right. I explained our home was no longer her home and she needed to get in her car and drive anywhere that wasn't our house. I explained I no longer felt any love for her at all after what she'd done and there'd be no second chances. She began to apologize, cry, and plead. Remember, this is the, the who moments ago said that's not what it looked like. Two rounds fired into the double oven and one into the fridge brought blessed silence. Having your nearest neighbor over two miles away has its benefits. At that time of the night... Two miles away, believe me, people are going to hear this thing. Because those things are loud. I explained to her at the moment I didn't care if I lived or died and that she had totally destroyed me with her behavior. I also explained that all the love I had for her turned to hate the minute I saw her and Marcus naked together. If I could have Thanos snap, snap her from existence and my memory at that moment, I would have. I told her I, barely maintained, I'm, I was barely maintaining my composure with the feelings I had of loathing her. I said it would be best if she went into the garage, got in her car, and drove away forever. Through, the tear, through tears, she went out in the garage, got in her car, and left. That was about five hours ago. Realizing I may have committed a crime or two with my reaction, I didn't want to deal with any cops that happened to show up. Dude, you're going to be dealing with them real soon. Again, I'm sure many people wouldn't blame this guy, but still, it is what it is. 
I turn off everything and lock the doors before going out and getting in my car again. My dad owns a fishing cabin he and his buddies use fairly often. I drove here and used the hidden, key, hidden spare key to let myself in. It was far too early to call anyone when I got here. I decided I needed a drink, and I'm about a quarter way through a bottle of my father's scotch. Even though I can't blame him, this guy should not be drinking. Uh-uh. I'm about a quarter way through the bottle I bought his scotch. Dad is going to be pissed about that until I tell him what my wife did. Plus, I'm pretty certain it's the bottle I bought for his birthday last month. I think your dad's got bigger things to worry about with you, obviously, with the weapon in that house and what's coming. The bottle of scotch is small potatoes. I really don't know what to do. I've read through posts here and other subs on Reddit looking for answers, but most seem to be people trying to figure out if their spouse is cheating. I already know the truth. Well, I know as much truth as I want to know. The reasons for her infidelity all ring hollow. Well, guys, you're going to see in the other parts why she was doing what she did and how this all unfolds. Other posts seem to be some strategies to get a cheater back. Why would anyone want to get back with a cheating spouse is beyond me. Yes, exactly. That's madness. But I want a divorce. I want it in my favor as fast as I can get it. She doesn't have the, op the option to pick me up ever again. I am a human, not a carnival prize. I want to remove her from my life and burn any reminder of her in my life. I don't want to ever see her or hear from her again. Can anyone be taken care of by lawyers? I have money to get things started. What I don't have is the time, energy, and patience to be dealing with this BS. Eight effing years of marriage down the drain. And anybody watching this that's been through something like, not like this, but just cheated on all that, I'm sure you can I, identify with all these feelings and the thoughts that are going through his head and all, all the emotions. It sucks. It says, eight years that I now consider one huge lie because after what I just saw, how can I accept anything she ever said to me as truth? Right, makes you question everything. Eight years of my life wasted on evil BITC edge fraud. Part of me is wishing I had off them both and just taken my own life. No, bro, because that makes you worse than them. You can move on, but don't do that. But that may be the scotch talking. Jesus, I still have to get my shit tested just to make sure that that WHRE didn't give me anything. Actually, I pissed away a decade on her now that I can think about. Her actions have invalidated my life and negated any value to my time with her. The only thing I will be taking from that marriage is that honesty and loyalty are things from the past. Well, as I've said many times before, we're in Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0 world nowadays. The only thing forever about any relationship anymore is herpes. That shit is forever. Love and marriage are all effing lies. Really, really down right now. Some, I'm sure, are already viewing me like some knuckle-dragging Neanderthal for responding with violence and threats. I also know some will be giving me grief for the use of one of my weapons. I didn't off anybody, and the bed sheets were already soiled before I fired a shot. If the bullet holes reduce the price of the house, can be sold for it by a few thousand, I can live with that. I just can't deal with this shit. Part of me wants to just eat a darn bullet and give up. No, bro, it's not worth it. You don't want to give up your life for some evil chick? No. You can start over. It may take time, a lot of therapy, but you can move on. The life I had is over and it's not coming back, even if I wanted to. People are going to say I dodged a bullet. Irony. Not having kids my wife and finding out she's disloyal. It doesn't feel that, that way right now. I go from crying uncontrollably to rage like I've never known. Either I face this or just end it all. And right now, the second choice seems a lot better option. Maybe if I pass out and get a little sleep, things won't seem as bad, but I doubt it. You gotta put the bottle of scotch away, that's that's for sure. The weather forecast looks looks like things will be clearing up enough to work in a few days, so I will need to be in one, on a plane at that time before. I don't like the region we are working for various reasons, but part of me just wants to stay there where the job is done and not come back. I wouldn't blend this guy at all if he wanted to just walk away and never come back, but he has to deal with this, and he's going to be dealing with a lot more than he realizes pretty soon. Hardy wants to figure out where I can start over. Uh, how do I decide what lawyer to get? Is there a rating system online for legal assistance on Yelp or some other site? I hate damn lawyers, members of the scummiest legal profession. Now I have to find the most hard hardball lawyer I can find. Sorry for the wall of text. It wasn't as uh, I hoped. But nothing is going to remove the heartache anytime soon. What the hell am I supposed to do now? What is the point of doing anything? The person I was, for, I was focused giving all my, for my all is gone forever, and tonight I learned she never existed. It, was, it wasn't perfect by any means. 
Well, on some level, you can realize that he gave his all to someone that, that wasn't the real her. So at least the, one, the woman who cheated on him wasn't the person he thought she was. That gives any kind of comfort. But I was faithful. I was never abusive. She never heard she never heard me really yell until tonight. I was a good husband. I like being married and faithful, but for every good guy out there, there's some SLUT just waiting to get her claws into him so she can ruin her his life for her gain. F this life, F my soon-to-be ex-wife, and F relationships. I'm just rambling now. Guess I'll go to bed. When I wake up, I guess I will call my parents and fill them out what happened. I'm just shocked, and I'll never get head had heartache like this in my life. Before, maybe tomorrow, I'll feel better. So guys, pretty intense. Pretty crazy. You can't blame this guy in the least for doing what he did. Okay, but it's going to get him a whole lot of trouble. And this is the end of part one. Now tomorrow, part two, you're going to see what happens when reality sets in. The police show up because this guy obviously can't go firing off weapons and all that and how things start to unravel. But this guy will be come out in the end, which is good, but... Part two, it's all about the whole legal mess he's going to get into him very close to going to prison. It's definitely interesting. And then part three will wrap it all up with even more details of what's going on with the wife and her lover and this whole real estate scheme. It's pretty crazy. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and what you think about this. And again, guys, I'll have part two up in a day or two. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.